Hey all, I want to go through today setting up uh, Monarch with Sequence. Um, so when you first log into Monarch, um, you'll see a splash screen or a splash modal here in the middle that'll uh, prompt you for connecting your first account. Um, I've already used this as a demo account here, so we're going to go ahead and add uh, the institution from the settings menu. So we're going to go down here to settings and institutions and add account. Um, you can also go in from the accounts tab on the left and you'll also have a add account on the top right once you click on that. Uh, so we're going to search sequence. And it's going to follow the same plaid flow that you're probably used to. And then you're going to go ahead and choose uh, sequence if you've previously connected. If you haven't, you're going to choose sequence and log in with your sequence credentials. Um, so here you're going to have uh, basically all of your pods listed. Um, Depending on the institution, it'll let you select or unselect accounts. Um, sequence, I uh, uh, believe, is set to default to all, so you're going to have all of your pods come in. You can always delete those later, though, uh, if you have too many or don't want those coming in. So the way that I kind of think about um, finance is uh, whether it's personal, business, what have you, um, they all operate kind of in three different pillars. Uh, so the first pillar being uh, actual money movement. So that's going to either be like accounts payable, uh, accounts receivable, uh, your checking account, um, manually moving ACH. For me, that's sequence. Um, pillar number two is going to be reporting side. So like the reporting of today. So this is going to be Monarch. So um, show me how much I've spent in uh, the last month. Show me how much I've spent in the last year, that type of thing. But it's a here and the now of how am I spending money or using my money. Um, and then uh, pillar number three is going to be forecasting. So that's gonna either going to be like a financial advisor or using another tool to help forecast either future net worth or make uh, financial uh, future decisions. So those are kind of the three pillars. So um, we're working on integrating uh, pillar one and pillar two. How do we move money and how do we report on it? Cool. So I brought in all of uh, my pods here. As you can see, I have quite a few. This list can get uh, very unwieldy very quickly. So there's some things like I don't care about. Um, that they're just kind of automatic, they automatically pay. So for a good example, I'm going to go um, choose this life storage one here. This is a, a small storage unit I use for business. Um, I want this to just be hidden in the account list so that it doesn't, uh, it does, I don't have to keep scrolling past it. I'm not, I don't really care about the balance. It's auto topped up. Um, I just want to hide it in the list so that I'm not always looking at it. So we could go through, you'll notice it's still in this list, but now it's been hidden from the accounts list. So if we go down to the bottom here, You'll see show uh, one hidden account that's now hidden. So it makes it a little bit easier to uh, manage this list here uh, once you have uh, all of the ones uh, kind of paired down to the ones that you want to see. So for me, that's my digital envelope system um, that I hope to you know, cover a little bit uh, in a different video. Um, but that's the idea is that you can basically have a list of all of your different uh, accounts here. Um, next up, I kind of want to show how to attach a goal here. So um, goals are pretty cool. They're the way of kind of uh, getting to either a cash reserve or paying down debt or doing um, something with your money that you want to track progress on. So here we can say that I want to do like a down payment on a house. Um, I could also say I want to save for a car and maybe a vacation as well. So we're going to go ahead and just focus on the down payment. I'm going to choose next. And I can either rename this. Um, we can call this maybe like house projects. You can also choose a different image too. So like, um, like home remodeling. I don't know if there's a good one in here with like construction. Uh, this one looks kind of cool. Let's choose that uh, and go ahead and click save. So now I'm going to go ahead and choose uh, how much do I want to save to. So let's choose like 25,000. And then um, we want to add an account. So uh, Monarch can auto kind of synchronize your goal progress for you. So we're going to choose um, the account that we want to use. So here you can't really search in this list too easily, um, but you should be able to find it pretty quickly here, I think. Okay. Once I've selected my account, I'm going to go ahead and uh, click next here. And then it's going to ask me how much do I want to contribute per month? Um, this is kind of just a, a quick guess here um, because we can actually change this on the budget page. Um, so we're going to go ahead and choose next here. All right, so now we have our goal. So we can pull up our goal progress here and we can see that like we're, we're for example, 54% saved towards uh, 25,000. We have one um, 
we have one pod connected or one account here it's showing the balance and we can also have transactions auto tagged to this as well so you can see uh, either something contributing to the goal or taking away from the goal um, and then you can also have goal priorities on if let's say if you have 10 different things um, but you only have enough flex in your budget for seven of them you can rank your goal priorities and all of that so now if we go over the budget side of things this is kind of really where um, uh, Monarch on the reporting side come into play is that you can really set your own and kind of tune this. I cleared this down to zero. I should have probably kept the, the onboarding defaults here for this demo account. Um, but for example, um, we can come in and we can say the food and dining. I've spent some money there. Let's go ahead and show three unbudgeted. So I've spent uh, $50 on groceries. So let's say my grocery budget is uh, $750, for example. Um, you'll see that I have a progress bar now towards my goal. Or towards my budget um, and now we have some spend there so let's say i'm expecting to be paid uh say a thousand dollars or two thousand uh, dollars for example for a paycheck i can also apply to future months to kind of help me there on the budgeting side so now we have uh, this should update and we should have some money left over so i went ahead and uh we've got we've spent uh 750 and then plus the 500 from our goal contribution leaves us 750 remaining in our budget um, this is very, very flexible. Um, so the other thing I'm going to show here, since this is trying to keep this quick, um, is the rules side of things. So um, since we're already sequence users, we're pretty familiar with how to uh, make rules and all of that. Um, these are three examples. Um, so one is like how to grab the Monarch subscription itself. Um, another one is an example here of uh, that I created earlier. Let me go ahead and delete this and recreate it. Um, and then also a transfer as well. So like. I know a lot of you guys that are now getting into Monarch, um, I had the same issue um, that where the transactions through sequence are actually double accounting, um, basically where it was um, showing that uh, payroll was being done twice. So if we go through and I actually pull up transactions really quick, you can probably see that um, a good example might be. I don't think I see any in here. They were already already changed with the uh, transfer amount, but the idea is that um, sometimes your payroll will come in and it'll be shown uh, since the transactions coded is uh, direct deposit through sequence, it'll uh, Monarch will actually grab it and consider it payroll. So then you're, you'll be inflated on your income side. So to fix that, um, we're just going to go into settings, rules, and we're going to pull up our original statement from the transaction and we're just going to load that value in here. And then we can add as many as you want. So um, when you go through, you can have, you know, 1, 5, 10, 20 different contains here, or they can be also exact match if you want to use that. An exact match works pretty well, um, especially if you're trying to grab specific transaction identifiers that Sequence has been using. Um, and then we're also going to change the category here to transfer. Um, if you want, you can also create a tag. So let's call one like Sequence, um, or we call it like Automation or we can actually say automated, let's say automated. So we're gonna have a new tag called automated. We can change the color here if we want, we can make it like purple. And now any transaction that matches these will automatically be tagged um, as automated and the category updated to transfer, excuse me. Um, so the other thing you can do here is bulk update too. So you can actually say, uh, let's say I, uh, give you changes. So there's no changes here to grab because it, it already uh, matched on all of these. Um, but if I were to delete this and save it, I'm going to get a preview to show here. There we go. So now that we have a preview, I can go ahead and click change um, to 85 transactions. So you can do a bulk update here, which makes it a lot easier when you're first getting started. You kind of go ahead and categorize all of those. Um, so we can get now go ahead and save and it'll do a bulk transfer and that's going to ask me, are you sure this looks right because I'm doing 85 transactions? That's okay. So now it's already done. The other cool thing is with the digital envelope system that I'm using with sequence here, you can actually, it's a lot easier than saying like if merchant equals this or if spend was on this account, you can now just grab, for example, like my gas pod, my gas and fuel pod. I can just grab this and I can update a category to gas automatically and then just go ahead and save. So now I can also do a bulk transaction to update all 10 existing things and update them uh, and have them gas now. So now you'll see if I go into my budget category or my budgets and I scroll down to I believe it's auto and transport. 
you'll see that I have gas spend now of $73. So now I can update this and make this like 150 and you'll see the budget change there. Um, the other thing we can do is tracking cash back. So we can say, um, let's go ahead and create a custom category for that. So we're gonna go into categories and we're gonna say income. Let's create a new income category and we're gonna call this one sequence rewards. And they use a present, so let's use a present too. It's a gift actually. Let's use that. And it's group is gonna be income and then we're gonna go ahead and save. So now this is here. Um, but since this is a new category, there's nothing that would ever link to it. So it would be manual for us. So let's go ahead and set a rule. So now we're going to have a new rule and we're going to say if account equals uh, sequence rewards. And um, let's say there's a possibility of that going negative. So we're going to say if this is income greater than $0, uh, then we're going to set the category to sequence rewards. We're going to apply to existing transactions and we're going to go ahead and save. So now if you see, uh, if we go into transactions, we can actually do a command. Since I'm on Mac here, I'm going to do a command K. I can actually do a sequence rewards and I can pull up the sequence rewards category. And there's my sequence rewards that I've gotten this month already. So it's pretty easy to um, kind of go through and just add everything. Um, but uh, yeah, that should be enough to get you started.